Um, and so are you guys going on, you're going on, a, on a book tour? A cross-country book tour. Um, is there a van involved, or is it... Uh, uh... I think they're flying us around, I hope. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see when we get to the airport, I guess. They might just put us on a van. There's a lot we don't know. Right, that sounds like a good plan. That should work. I think it was our idea to do a 10 year anniversary book, but we didn't get around to it until the 11th year, you know? Because I, I remember I was on a kick where, that 10th year where I was like, oh, that was we need deal. To, yeah, like to me it was a big deal to have 10 years. And I was like, we should do a book. Like, I, I wanted to make a, a big deal out of you it. You wanted to go to dinner? I wanted to go out to dinner at uh, Applebee's. We've always sort of been in the middle of it, but every now and then you, you sort of get forced to step back and look at all the things that we've done. And, you know, a lot of times I'm like, wow, we get a lot of shit done uh, here. And um, and it only makes sense to, to compile it all into one place. It was definitely fun to go back and look at all that old stuff and really kind of for once let it sink in like, wow, that's a long time we've been doing this, you know, it's a big deal. In November 1998, the strip was posted and Mike Gabe Krahulik and Jerry Tycho Holkins made their presence known to gamers, as gamers who would go there. With Penny Arcade running strong, Child's Play, PAX Classic, PAX East, their own video game on a rain slick precipice of darkness, and even their own reality TV show, these guys are soaring like two magnificent luminescent Italians in tanuki suits. <laughs> Please join me in welcoming Mike and Jerry. Thank, thank you. So much. Wow. Thank you very much. I don't know. I mean, I definitely think that I could have conceived of doing it this long, but I don't think I would have. I could have thought about how popular it would be. Like, I could have done it forever and just labored in obscurity. Like that would have been fine. <laughs> there's just an there's an idea that that it's like so if something is is successful that there's like some kind of, you know. Cause it's like ordained in some cosmic sense or something like that, and that's actually not how it works. You have to fuck up a lot, and you have to get screwed a lot by people who you thought would not do that. Yeah. And you have to keep doing it even when it seems like it's the last thing that you want to do. And I felt like it was crucial because everything, things are pretty cool now. I mean, you're interviewing me for a goddamn television program, but it seemed important to me, especially for someone who is in the trenches currently, like. Yeah, it's like this bad feeling is is actually completely normal. This is. I thought um, we were just too stupid to quit. Yeah, I think that was about the best way to say it. Oh. What do you want, Robert? <laughs> <laughs> I waited for an hour. It's <laughs> lying for two <laughs> signs. <laughs> You could write to Sean. S E A N. S E A N. I'm Rachel. Hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Rachel. It is complete. I might have. Had Thank you, sir. So Mike and I do make Penny Arcade. That's true. But we are not the extent of the of the company, and absolutely everything that is produced by Penny Arcade. I mean, that's not us directly. Like, you know, Robert has a lot to do with that. Prior to 2008. I took one weekend off for the first five years that I was here. Yeah, that's that's about it. So I mean, it, I work a lot. I don't know how many hours that is. Hold on. Let's see, four, twelve, sixteen. 
Well, yeah, it's like 120 hours a week, whatever, I mean. Has it ever made you feel strange to see yes. Robert yes. working like 14 hours yes. a day? Yeah, you know, on Monday nights when I'm here at uh, 11.30 picking up my game board and everyone's packing up their minis and their dice and Robert's in his office answering email or he's out cutting foam so he can pack PS3s to ship them to Boston and I leave and say goodbye and he's still there, like, I think, wow, yeah, I mean, that, I can't do that. I can't, I can't dedicate that kind of time to it. That's incredible. Thank God for him. Doing, uh, you know, doing what we do, achieving what we have achieved, and um, yeah, like through all the initiatives that that we've done. It, uh, looking back at it, I would like to think that, you know, when I am when I'm done with everything, I can look back at this and say, you know what, did some good work. <laughs> it's not a. It is not an assumption for us that we can do this. Have you ever thought about what would happen if everything did go back to the way it was? Before? All the time. Are you kidding? Is that a fucking joke? I have nightmares about Toys R Us and working at Circuit City again. Like literally, I have nightmares about going back to all those places and doing those jobs again. I think about. I think about the um, the other life uh, constantly. Um, and I, I, I try to make my peace with it because I've always had the sense that it is imminent. So we have never stopped trying to earn what we have. And we know that the moment we slip, it will be taken away. Yeah. And so it is of the utmost importance to be worthy of it constantly. asking me weird questions in here. Okay. Like. Are they making you feel weird? Do you want me to beat them up? Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm being, I'm, I feel uncomfortable. Well, let them know that when they get done in there, they should come in here so I can kick their asses. All right. You guys hear that? Thanks, buddy. Thanks. Next question. 